In this Photoshop tutorial, I'll teach you how to place text and objects in perspective using the vanishing point tool in Photoshop. So to begin, I'm just going to revert back to our original photo. This works great with photos where you do have converging lines into a central vanishing point or when you have clearly defined lines in a room or something like this. So to begin on our layer, we're going to go to filter vanishing point. This is going to open up the vanishing point menu and you just have this little point clicker where you can create our first grid. So this is great. We already have the lines of the road making our job very easy. I'm going to simply click towards the vanishing point and then down and then create all four spots. So we have our grid. Now Photoshop, if it likes your vanishing point, it will make it blue with the grid. If for some reason it feels like it doesn't make sense, it might be red or yellow, but you want to get it to a point where it is blue and Photoshop is recognizing that it makes sense. And from here, you can actually stretch it out. So I can expand it on either side, any side really. And also if you hold the command key, you can click on any side or point and you can actually expand the plane up or to the right. So in this way, I can kind of create these like invisible walls that don't really exist in this photo, but they might exist in a photo uh, that has four walls. Also, if you hold option and drag, you can, you can actually rotate the plane a little bit. So you can create these perpendicular or angled walls. But let's just focus on our first plane right now. So I'm going to press OK. Nothing is going to look like it happened, but we do have that information stored in the vanishing point menu. Now, when I go to my text tool or really anything else and write out whatever I want, I want to make this text kind of big enough so that it doesn't get stretched out too much. And I'm also going to want to grab a selection of this text. So if you hold the command key and click on the actual thumbnail of the layer, It'll load up a selection of whatever's in that layer. That's a nice trick for any layer. And I'm going to press Command C to copy the contents of this selection. Now I can hide this layer and press Command D or right click and deselect. And if I want to work on a new layer, I'm going to go to Layer, New Layer, and go back to the Vanishing Point menu. And now I still have all of those planes that we created loaded up. And if I press Command V, It'll paste in our selection of that text and I can click and drag the selection down to our plane that we created. If for some reason you're having trouble, you might want to first press command T to open up the transform menu and maybe shrink down your layer a bit. If you made it too big, I'm going to hold shift to keep it in proportion. And now I'll try that. So there we go. Now it's fitting in. It was just a little too big last time. So it was disappearing. And now I can move it around. You'll see as I move up, it gets smaller. As I move down, it stays in proportion as if it was painted on this road. You also have these buttons, flip and flop, just in case you needed to make it go the other way or backward or upside down. That, that helps especially when you're putting the text on perhaps another wall. But once you do have it set in location, you can then press OK. And since we're working on a new layer, it's now painted that text on the ground. You, it is a rasterized version, so you can't go back and change the text now. It's not really a smart object or anything, um, but you can always just repeat that process if you just keep the original layer and copy and paste and change it if you need to. The other thing you can do if you want to help with blending is right click on this layer, go to blending options, and use the blend if menu in the blending options tab. So here you can choose to blend this layer if the underlying layer is a certain spectrum or level of dark to light. And if you hold the option key, you can actually split these two tabs to kind of create a more feathered edge. And this is just one way where you can bring in some of that grit of the ground to maybe make it look like it was more painted in. I could also change the color if I want to make it match with the original road line. That's one thing you do want to keep in mind is like the lighting and saturation and vibrance of the original photo when you're trying to blend. And you do also have the option to put these layers on blending modes. Let's say I wasn't using any effects. I can always just put these layers on blending modes like overlay or soft light or 
multiply or the like, especially if it wasn't a white colored effect. Here's another example where we do have four walls. And if I was to go to vanishing point and start out with this floor here and create the four corners, Photoshop says that's not really working for it. So I can just, there we go, stretch it out till it works. And then I can grab this edge and hold command and pull it up to create a perpendicular wall. It matches really nicely. I can put it all the way up to the corner and I can do it again for the ceiling. And I can do it again for the side. Now, if I was to drag in something like this smiley face graphic and do the same thing, uh, command click to load that selection, command C to copy it, and then on a new layer, I'll simply, I'll command D to deselect and then go to filter, vanishing point, and command V to paste it in, click and drag it in to one of these planes, it's a bit big. So I'll press Command T, shrink it down a bit. I still have my options to flip or flop it if I wanna change the direction. I can put it on any one of these walls. And the cool part is I can also kind of make it go between these walls as well. So let's say I put it here. If I press Command T, I can actually also rotate it. Holding Shift will keep it in proportion. I can do something like this on this wall press OK, and then I can do my same kind of blending modes. So maybe I'll put it on something like darken or multiply, or maybe I'll also use the blend if tab to bring in some of that background texture, bring some of those highlights and shadows from the background in. And you get a basic idea of how you can begin to use this vanishing point tool to take flat objects and throw them in perspective onto a wall or surface of your photo. If you enjoyed this tutorial, my name is Justin Odisho. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and check out hundreds of other Photoshop tutorials in the Photoshop tutorial playlist on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.